Well, hey guys, it's Mr. Schauber, and this is our uh, in, uh, pro football uh, coaches presentation. Uh, you know, a great coach can bring out the best in a player, and in football, you know, coaching is is really like playing chess. You're you're trying to outwit and outsmart the opponent, and you're and you're trying to move chess pieces around on a board uh, and make your players successful. And so uh, coaches spend a lot of time in the film room watching game tape, and they spend a lot of time drawing up new plays and, and adapting uh, already existing plays. And, but great coaches, like I said, can bring out the best in an individual uh, and can change people's lives. We've all, we've all probably had coaches that have uh, really influenced us throughout our lifetime. And uh, I know when it gets to the pro level, it's really no different. So these are some of the great coaches. When you talk about pro football, you've got to start with a few guys, a uh, you know, select few, and one of them is Curly Lambeau. Of course, the founder, player, and first coach of the Green Bay Packers, one of the most storied franchises in pro football history. In college, he had played under legendary coach Newt Rockney at Notre Dame, and uh, after basically founding the Packers, he started playing for them in 1919, uh, and he did so until 1929. Uh, not only was he playing for the Packers during those years, but he was also the coach for those years. Uh, all, all throughout his playing career, he was coaching the team, and then he coached the team another 20 years after he was done playing. Uh, he was the first Packer to throw a pass, throw a TD pass, and make a field goal. Uh, you know, he uh, a lot of the first for the Green Bay franchise started, you know, uh, with uh, Curly Lambeau. Of course, Lambeau Field, uh, where the Packers played their home games, is named after him. There's a 14-foot statue of Lambeau uh, outside the stadium uh, to greet fans as they arrive. And uh, he's just, he is a legend. Okay, of course, he's a member of the Green Bay Packers Hall of Fame, and he was inducted into the first group of the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1963. You can see his career coaching record. He's still fifth all-time in wins by a coach, and he won six NFL championships as a Packers coach. And you can see the years there. And those six are tied for most all-time titles. So uh, Curly Lambeau, of course, is one of the founders of pro football, one of the legends of pro football, and, of course, uh, he is immortalized um, as the founder of the Green Bay Packers. The other guy that you have to look at as really, you know, one of the founders of pro football is George Hallis, nicknamed Papa Bear, uh, because he was a player, coach, owner, and pioneer uh, in pro football. He was the founder and owner of the Chicago Bears and co-founder of the NFL. He had played at the University of Illinois, uh, basically at wide receiver. He was even uh, the Rose Bowl MVP in 1919, so he was a pretty darn good football player himself. He also played for two months uh, in the summer of 1919 for the New York Yankees baseball team, and that, those are that's even before the Babe Ruth days. You can see in pro football, he played uh, for uh, a decade for the Hammond All-Stars, uh, no longer in existence, the Decatur Staley's, the Chicago Staley's, and then the Chicago Bears. He was also the coach of Decatur and uh, and Chicago Staley's, as well as the Chicago Bears. Um, but he was the coach, so he was a player coach uh, for, you know, for his whole career. And then he was the coach of the Bears, you can see, from 1933 to 42, 1946 to 55, and 1958 to 67. Uh, not only was he the coach, but he was the owner of the Decatur Staley, Chicago Staley's, and then Chicago Bears from 1920 to 1983, when he passed away at the age of 88. Uh, he was in pro football his entire life, basically, his whole adult life. And uh, when he died, he was still the owner of the Bears and still running operations. Eight NFL championships as head coach. And uh, and a couple as owner. Um, uh, well, so he had the six as a coach, which is tied 
for most all time with Curly Lambeau and Bill Belichick, and then the two as an owner, um, which uh, make him uh, the you know eight total titles, which I mean unbelievable, right? So you can see there his number seven jersey is retired by the Bears. Um, his overall coaching record, he has the second most all-time wins for a head coach uh, with uh, 318 regular season and 324 overall wins. Um, because he would played the University of Illinois, he picked the Bears colors of orange and navy blue um, because they were the colors of Illinois. So when he founded the Bears, he said, well, we're going to use the same colors as the University of Illinois, who I played for. Uh, he named his team the Bears in 1922 in honor of the Chicago Cubs because the Cubs let the Bears play at Wrigley Field for the first uh, few years of their existence. He also served in the U.S. Navy during World War I and World War II, earning the rank of captain. And uh, so absolutely, Curly Lambeau, George Hallis, these are, you know, Mr. Football. Okay, for you know, pro football. These guys are the ones that really got it going. Here are some pictures of George Hallis. Uh and he was he was a tough guy, okay, as a coach, as an owner. Um the jerseys you can see of the Chicago Bears have the initials G S H on them on the upper left sleeve for George S. Hallis. And uh the George S. Hallis trophy is given to the NFC champion every year, the, the team that's going to go to the Super Bowl representing the NFC. And of course, Hallis was in that first group of the Hall of Fame in 1963. And the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio is located on George Hallis Drive. So it doesn't get any more football than Mr. Hallis himself. Paul Brown is a great uh, I mean, what a cool story he has. He coached um, for a decade and a half for the Cleveland Browns and for, uh, you know, about eight years for the Cincinnati Bengals. He had also coached at Ohio State for a few years in the early 40s before he went into, into pro football. And before that, he had coached high school football in Ohio uh, for a decade. So he was the first coach of the Cleveland Browns, and that's why. They're called the Browns. They're named after him. Uh, he also played a, a role in founding the Cincinnati Bengals and was the team's first coach. So both teams in Ohio, of course. This is an Ohio guy. Uh, you can see with the Browns, he won four uh, championships, four in a row from 1946 to 49. And then uh, with the Browns, he won three NFL titles. So four AAFC titles and three NFL titles. Um, and you can see the years for the NFL titles, 1950, 54, and 55. What a successful coach. Uh, Three-time NFL coach of the year. Uh, just unbelievable. Now, I told you he had coached at Ohio State. He won an NCAA championship at Ohio State in 1942. And he had won six Ohio high school state championships uh, when he was the um, a coach in high school there uh, in Ohio. Not only had he won six state titles in Ohio, he was four times high school national uh, high school national champion when he was a high school coach. So this guy was unbelievable. Um, you can see his overall records there. He's still sixth all-time in coaching wins. And he was really the first coach to use game film to scout opponents, which everybody does now a ton. Uh, you always got to watch the film, right? You play a game, and the next, you know, the next day your, your coach gets you together after your game is you're watching film. You're seeing how the game went. You're watching what players did on individual plays and so forth. And, and he was kind of the first guy to do that, to scout his opponents. Uh, he invented the modern face mask that they use on helmets. And uh, he helped integrate the game with black players as well. So he was a, a trailblazer in pro football. He was ahead of his time. And he definitely um, is indispensable when you talk about the history of pro football. Vince Lombardi. What would pro football be without this guy? Uh, you can see he he coached the Packers, and you know he only did so for nine seasons. Uh, 
And so we, we tend to think of, of Lombardi as being around forever, but he was only the coach of the Packers for nine years. And yet um, he is, he's one of the all-time legendary coaches in pro football history. Uh, after he got done coaching, uh, the Packers in 1967, he became the general manager of the Packers uh, for a year, and then he in 1968, and then he coached the Redskins in 1969, which we all forget about. Uh, he is known, though, just as being a great motivator. He was always good for a great quote. He is, and he was a he was the consummate winner, um, and that's why he's such a legend. He had played collegiately at Fordham University, and uh, and then once he got got to be the coach of the Packers, though, uh, he won three NFL championships in 61, 62, and 65, which was before the Super Bowl era. And then he led the Packers to back-to-back -back wins in Super Bowls one and two. So five overall titles. You can see his regular season record, 96 wins, only 34 losses, six ties. He was 9-1 and one in the playoffs with the Packers. Never had a losing season in his years coaching the Packers um, or or overall in the NFL, uh, for that matter. Of course, he's a member of the Packers Hall of Fame. He's a member of the Redskins Ring of Fame, uh, even though he only coached there for one year. Uh, of course, he was inducted to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1971, and the Super Bowl trophy is called the Lombardi Trophy. So uh, you don't get much of, an high, of a higher honor than that. So that is Vince Lombardi. Tom Landry. One of the just toughest guys, um, smartest coaches, and just just unbelievably um, a great, he's a great man. Uh, he was tough. He was gruff. A lot of his players, uh, they, in their own words, felt like they never really saw the true uh, Tom Landry, you know, who he was inside because he was very stoic uh, in his, you know, in his demeanor. Uh, didn't change his facial expressions a whole lot during the game oftentimes, but but his players, when they got to know him a little bit, they knew that he, he cared about them. They knew that, that he uh, was interested in their lives and, and, and that he wanted them to succeed. He coached the Dallas Cowboys for 29 seasons. And uh, that's just incredible for one coach to be there that long. He had the signature look, of course, He'd wear a suit and a tie on the sidelines. Uh, his signature hat he always wore. He always had the same kind of the same getup on the sidelines. Um, he he was you know he was dressed up. Um, he had been a great player before he became a great coach. He he played for the New York Yankees in the AAFC. Of course, they're not around today as a football team, but um, that was one of the teams back in the old days. And uh, for the New York Giants. Um, and he, his career spanned a, a seven seven years. Uh, he was a Pro Bowl and first team All Pro in 1954 at cornerback, and then he got into coaching. He was um, a two time Super Bowl champion with the Cowboys. Uh, he won five NFC championships overall, so went to five Super Bowls. Like I said, won two of them: the 1971 season, the 1977 season. He has the fourth most wins all time for a coach in NFL history with 250. Um, he has an NFL record 29 years as coach of one team and a record 20 consecutive winning seasons. Incredible. He invented the 4-3 defense, which is used, you know, basically uh, league-wide now. It's the 4-3 or the 3-4. Um, that just means 4-3 means you have four defensive linemen and three linebackers. A 3-4 would be three defensive linemen and four linebackers. But he was extremely innovative, innovative ahead of his time, uh, drawing up uh, great offensive plays, great defensive schemes. Uh, he was the guy. And the Cowboys, during his time as coach, became known as America's team. Okay, uh, Inducted to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1990. And, you know, pro football for him was, it was really his life. But... I think when it came right down to it on the sidelines, you know, he, he'd he been through tougher, right? He had served in the U.S. Army Air Corps in World War II for three years, and he and that really shaped him in his life. And he had seen combat up close and personal, and, uh, you know, 
he just he tried to drill that same type of tenacity and work ethic and toughness into his team. And the Cowboys had a lot of great teams during his tenure as coach. Don Shula was the head coach of the Baltimore Colts from 1963 to 69 and then went to the Miami Dolphins and coached them from 1970 to 1995. He had played in the 50s for the Cleveland Browns, Baltimore Colts, and Washington Redskins. Um, but where he made his mark in football was coaching, no doubt about it. He was a two-time Super Bowl champ, back-to-back -back seasons with the Dolphins in 72 and 73. He went to five Super Bowls overall, therefore winning five AFC championships. And uh, he also won an NFL championship in 1968 with the Colts, uh, but they lost the Super Bowl, Super Bowl III, to the Jets. So technically overall, he had three uh, NFL championships, two Super Bowls and the uh, NFL title in 68. Um, he coached, um, like I said, then overall in six Super Bowls, went, went to five uh, with the Dolphins, one with the uh, Colts. And uh, you can see all the coaches of the year, coach of the year awards he won, uh, six overall from different uh, media outlets. He was, he was fantastic. Um, in 1972, uh, his Dolphins team, which won the Super Bowl, uh, they went 17-0, and including the postseason. That was, that was a 14-game regular season, and then 3-0 in, in the playoffs. They're the last team to go undefeated throughout the entire regular season and playoffs, uh, capping it off, winning a Super Bowl. So not since 1972 has a team gone undefeated the entire season. Pretty remarkable. Um, he was the NFL uh, All-Decade head coach for the 1970s. Of course, you can see why. And he has the most wins of any coach uh, in NFL history. Most regular season wins with 328. 20 seasons of at least 10 wins uh, as a coach. That's just unbelievable. You can see his overall record there. And uh, Don Shula, absolutely a football legend. Chuck Knoll, the legendary coach of the Steelers, coached starting in 1969 and then all through the decade of the 70s, all through the 80s, and retired from coaching in 1991. So he was part of four decades with the Steelers. Um, he was the NFL's uh, all-decade coach in the 1970s and 80s. Um, I just, we just got to talk about Don Shula, and he was uh, voted as the all-decade coach in the 70s as well. They had a couple coaches, but um, you'll see why Chuck Knoll uh, won those honors. You can see his overall record with the Steelers. You know, they had a number of years where they were average or above average, but uh, during the, especially the mid to late 70s, they were dominant. They won four AFC titles. You can see back-to-back -back years, 74 and 75, and then back-to-back -back in 78 and 79. And each time they went to the Super Bowl, all four of those times, they won it. They won Super Bowls 9 and 10, as well as 13 and 14. He was the first coach to win four Super Bowls. Uh, amazing. Inducted to the Hall of Fame in 1993, and uh, he had played for the Cleveland Browns before his coaching career got off the ground. So uh, Chuck Knoll, but unbelievable. The, you know, four for four in Super Bowls. Can't get any better than that. John Madden. Oh, who doesn't love John Madden? I grew up playing John Madden video games. And, you know, we, we played the first John Madden video games on the old Sega Genesis and, and uh, well, actually probably before that was the, the Nintendo, the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Then it became the Sega Genesis. And of course, Madden uh, games have been made for just about every platform since then, all the way up uh, to the present day. So uh, how did John Madden get so famous? How did he get a video game, the most popular football video game ever, uh, named after him? Well, he coached the Raiders. He became the head coach of the Oakland Raiders at the age of 32. Legendary Raider GM owner uh, Al Davis. After Davis got done coaching, uh, he got John Madden, hired John Madden to be his coach. And he was only 32 years old, the youngest coach in the league. And he coached 
for 10 seasons. Um, the Oakland Raiders took on that Al Davis, John Madden persona. And they were tough. They were mean. They were gritty. Uh, they would, you know, it's only cheating if you get caught type thing, right? And they would, uh, they would win at all costs. And he was a tremendous coach. In his 10 seasons, he won Super Bowl XI, won a Super Bowl, the 1976 season. Uh, you can see his career regular season record, 103-32-7. That's incredible, okay? Uh, basically, it's over a 3-1 to one win versus loss ratio. Uh, he was the youngest coach to reach 100 career regular season victories in NFL history, and uh he, of course, was inducted to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2006. Now, like I said, I grew up playing his video games and listening to him announce games. I never knew him as a coach, okay? Um, I was born the year before he retired from coaching. And so, uh, but I knew him as a broadcaster. And he, after he got done coaching, he worked as the main color commentator for basically whoever was going to pay him the highest salary, okay? He was the most sought after color commentator in football uh, during his broadcasting years. He worked for CBS, for ABC, NBC, and Fox. And, of course, uh, one of his his uh, quirks, I guess, if you will, is that he was, well, he had a well-known fear of flying. He was terrified of flying. And so he traveled to all the games that he would broadcast in his Madden Cruiser bus. And the Madden Cruiser, was, basically, was just a, a it was a bus-size motorhome. And he would travel around from city to city and broadcast the games. And he was just, he, we all loved John Madden. Uh, of course, his Madden video games became all the rage, right? Every platform, um, whatever the newest console was, uh, you know, you, you, you played Madden on that console. And like I said, they're still around today. And, and Madden... The Madden video games have withstood the test of time. They're awesome. So there's John Madden for you. Bill Walsh, the ultimate winner, um, you know, as, as just professional as a coach. Uh, he coached the 49ers for a decade. Um, from 1979 to 1988, he had coached at Stanford University, uh, from 1977 to 78, so before he took the 49ers job. And then a few years after he retired from the 49ers, he went back and coached Stanford for a few more seasons. Uh, 1981 and 84 NFL Coach of the Year. Uh, he was voted as one of the coaches uh, on the 1980s All-Decade team. And he led the 49ers to three Super Bowls during his 10 years as their coach. The 1981, 84, and 88 seasons. You can see his overall record there, 92, 59, and 1. But where he really stood out was the, the postseason record, 10 and 4, and those three Super Bowls, of course, to his credit. He popularized the what's known as the West Coast offense, which is where um, it's a, a, a lot of use of tight ends, running backs, running backs catching the ball out of the backfield. Um, it, the West Coast offense, after he popularized it and was so successful with it, you know, pretty much every team started to use that, and, and some of them still use it to this day. So he was just a professional in all ways, and uh, very positive um, as a coach, and his players, uh, from what I can tell, really enjoyed playing for him. Joe Gibbs, also a three-time Super Bowl champion. Joe Gibbs was a tremendous coach. Coached the Redskins from 1981 to 1992, and then again from 2004 to 2007. Uh, he took over a decade off and came back and coached a few more seasons. Uh, he also owns uh, a NASCAR team, uh, Joe Gibbs Racing. So he's dabbled in, in different sports as an owner and coach. Uh, three times Sporting News Coach of the Year when he was coaching uh, for the Redskins. Uh, Two-time AP Coach of the Year back-to-back -back years, 1982 and 83. Won four NFC championships, therefore went to four Super Bowls and won three of them, 1982, 87, and 91 seasons. You can see his career record of 154 and 94 and postseason record of 17 and 7. He won 10 or more games in eight seasons during his career, and he was really innovative as well. 
He's credited with inventing the single back, double or triple tight end set, <clears throat> kind of the jumbo set, you know, when you need uh, down at the goal line and you need, uh, need a tough yard or two, you bring in two tight ends or three tight ends and, and uh, really uh, slam the ball, uh, you know, up into the line. And so um, he's also credited with creating the trips formation though. So he could, he could play big and jumbo package or, he invented the trips formation, which is three receivers on one side of the ball. And that was almost un that was unheard of, right? I mean, who would have three receivers stacked on one side of the line of scrimmage? And so that, um, of course, presented matchup nightmares until defenses could kind of get used to it. So he was always looking, like, like all coaches do, always looking for an advantage, some new type of formation, new type of play that teams just can't catch on to and, you know, and you're going to win games uh, because of it. So Joe Gibbs was, uh, like Bill Walsh, just the ultimate professional, a perfectionist at his craft, and what a tremendous head coach. Bill Parcells, the big tuna. Who doesn't love the big tuna? Who wouldn't want that nickname? I probably, well, probably none of us. Uh, he coached the Giants during the 80s, uh, uh, stepped down from the Giants in 1990. Um, he coached the Patriots for a few seasons, the Jets for a few seasons, and the Cowboys for a few seasons. He was also the general manager for the Jets uh, while he was uh, basically coaching them and then the year after he stepped down. Um, he was also the executive vice president of football operations for the Dolphins in, from 2008 to 2010. So he's been GM, VP of football operations, head coach for numerous teams. Bill Parcells is, is you know, Football is his life, okay? Two-time AP NFL Coach of the Year, uh, once with the Giants, once with the Patriots. Um, you can see 1990s All-Decade Team Head Coach, his regular season record, 172, 130, and 1. Postseason record of 11 and 8. Won two NFC championships and one AFC championship, so he went to three Super Bowls and won two of them, and both of those with the Giants. He was incredible. Um, Expected perfection from his players. You draw plays and you got to run it right. And of course, all, all of these coaches are like this. They, again, they're, they're moving chess pieces out there on the board, trying to do matchups that the other team, you know, can't just, they, they can't match up with. They're trying to, to develop formations the other team has no answer for. And uh, Bill Parcells expected greatness from his teams and he often got it. And Bill Belichick, the coach of the Cleveland Browns for five seasons uh, from the early to mid-90s, did not have tremendous success with the Browns. And, uh, of course, no coach has been able to have success with the Browns for, well, we're working on a few decades now. But then he went to the Patriots starting in the year 2000, and he's coached them to this day. So uh, 20 seasons with the Patriots, and nine AFC championships, which means he's gone to nine Super Bowls. He's won six of them. That is a record for most Super Bowl uh, victories by a head coach. He has been the most successful uh, coach in the Super Bowl era, uh, especially as far as championships won. And he's currently third all-time in coaching wins. Belichick is gruff, hard-nosed, doesn't say much to the media, pretty standoffish. But he, when it comes to coaching, can do it as well as anybody. He's always looking for um, an edge, a matchup discrepancy somewhere. He's always looking for, uh, you know, he 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 always he'll put formations out on the field that teams haven't seen before that they're that they're not used to. Uh, he's not afraid if if you're going to give him the run so you can stop the pass, he will just run it 50 times in a game. If you're going to give him the pass so you can stop the run and you're going to stack the line of scrimmage, he'll throw it 50 times in a game. He'll do whatever it takes. And, you know, it would seem like other teams would figure out a way to stop his offenses and they just haven't done it. He's also surrounded himself with great assistance over the years. And, you know, all great coaches do that. As you bring in assistants and who are great at what they do and they help you win. And so Bill Belichick is a mastermind when it comes to football. All right, Al Davis. I had mentioned Al Davis. 
talking about John Madden. John Madden got hired by Al Davis. Al Davis was a good old boy from uh, Brooklyn. He had the New York accent. He was tough and mean. And his motto with the Raiders was just win, baby. He also had a motto of commitment to excellence. And he expected excellence from his team. Perfection on the field. He was the principal owner and general manager of the Raiders. You can see from 1972 to 2011. Um, he was very active in civil rights. He refused to allow the Raiders to play in any city where black and white players had to stay in separate hotels. He did a ton, obviously, to integrate pro football. Um, he was the first NFL owner to hire an African-American coach uh, and a female chief executive. He was the second NFL owner to hire a Latino head coach. And he was the only executive in NFL history to be an assistant coach, head coach, general manager, commissioner, and owner. So what the heck? How did he do all that stuff? Well, he coached the Raiders uh, from 1963 to 65 and won the AFL's Coach of the Year. That's when the Raiders played in the American Football League. Um, and then he became the commissioner of the AFL for a season in 1966. And, um, you know, but he, but he always loved the Raiders. So he went back to the Raiders. But he had been an assistant coach before he became head coach of the Raiders, and then um, after being commissioner, he became the uh, general manager and owner of the Raiders. And you can see, uh, as with Davis as owner and GM, the Raiders won three Super Bowls, the 1976, 80, and 83 seasons. And there are the Super Bowl rings that Al Davis uh, helped the Raiders win there on the bottom of the screen. So he was, yeah, he well, wasn't always very popular with other owners. Um, and other coaches because he was tough and he, he you know, he, he wanted to win and, and like everybody does, but he, he wasn't always playing Mr. Nice Guy. And so, but that was Al Davis and he didn't care if you liked him or, or if you didn't like him. He was, he was true to who he was and he wasn't going to change that. And so that is the legendary Al Davis. And Pete Rozelle. You know, I had to put Pete Rozelle on here. He was so influential in football history. Uh, commissioner of the NFL from 1960 to 1989, 30 seasons. And it was because of Pete Rozelle um, that really football and his popularity skyrocketed. And uh, all new TV contracts and the huge TV contracts and player salaries, of course, went up and coaching salaries went up. And football became, you know, probably, well, by the time he retired, football probably was the most watched sport in the United States. Uh, we always say that baseball is America's pastime. Well, football, the NFL, probably became America's pastime with Pete Rozelle as commissioner. And, uh, you know, during his tenure as commissioner, the Super Bowl started. Monday Night Football became a big deal. The NFL and AFL merger took place. That was in 1970. And the NFL expanded to a bunch of new cities and a bunch of new teams uh, started up. So, you know, his his role in professional football uh, cannot be overstressed. I mean, he was just instrumental in, in making pro football what it is today and how we know it. Um, of course, he was inducted to the Hall of Fame in 1985, even before he was done being commissioner. And the Pete Rozelle Trophy is given to the Super Bowl MVP. So the Lombardi Trophy is the, the trophy the winning team gets, but the MVP wins the Pete Rozelle trophy. So, uh, Pete Rozelle, there you go.